to us today from Hill, Ontario, Ontario, Canada, a suburb of Toronto. She started her career in art when she was nine years old. Bonnie obtained her Bachelor of Fine Arts from York University in Toronto and is an elected member of the Canadian Society of Painters in Watercolor, the Society of Canadian Artists, and a signature member of the Toronto Watercolor Society. She holds the bronze, silver, and gold achievement medals for having been in more than 25 juried shows. When Bonnie was raising small children, she decided to put aside oil and acrylic paint and concentrate in learning to master watercolor because it was more portable, dries faster, and there's a wide array of non-toxic light fast pigments to choose from. Her, her use of vibrant color and dramatic light make Bonnie's paintings instantly recognizable. Bonnie's artwork reflects her passion for the theater and music. She's even painted on stage to a symphony with the Richmond, um, Virginia Philharmonic Orchestra. And we sent you a video of that that you can watch. She adores landscapes and especially enjoys painting houses because of the history behind them. Bonnie's exhibited extensively in both solo and group shows throughout the history of her career. She's acquired wide success having her works displayed in galleries and art exhibits in Canada and the United States. So I will have Bonnie go ahead and start her demo. Okay, um, maybe I should go on here first. And I just wanna say hi to everybody. Um, how do I do this? I have to make myself spotlight, right? Just I, I can spotlight you, yeah, I can spotlight you. Okay, just for a minute, and then we'll go back to the painting. Anyway, I just want to say hi. Thank you so much. Um, I am greatly honored and really thrilled to be here. I certainly hope I don't screw this up. Anyway, <laughs> I just, you never know. You never know. It's a, it's a little bit of stage fright there. You never know what's going to happen. But I want to thank you all for coming, and I really hope you enjoy this. I am um, going to do one of my historic houses. I live in an area of Thornhill, Ontario, Canada, which is extremely historic and connected to you. It is a loyalist uh, town, meaning that these were people that escaped from the United States when the 13 colonies broke off to become the United States in 1776. And they were loyal to the crown and they, a lot of the descendants are still there quite an interesting history. The house, however, that I am painting today is not historic. Uh, it should be, it's 100 years old. I guess it will be now. Uh, it was built in 1924. It's one of my favorites. I don't know why, it just is. Sometimes we don't know, right? And I have painted this street many, many times and in many venues. And the process that I'm gonna take you through is generally just a lot of color and we'll just have a lot of fun. I have, um, an actual painting finished, just to show you. This is it. Hold on, let me spot, hold on, I'll spotlight it, hold on. Can you see it? I don't know. Yes. You can see it, yes? Yes. yes. All good. This great. is, uh, yeah, the street is called Colburn Street and this house, is probably one of my favorite houses of all time. So I chose this, this was on the demo and some of the YouTube stuff that I sent to Angie so you'd be able to see it. And I'll just take you through the process very quickly before I start. Um, I use color, I'm a colorist and I know that a lot of artists would probably gag or a lot of people would gag at my palette but I'm gonna show it to you anyway. There you go and that's cleaned up. Okay, I use very little mixing area on the actual surface of the palette. The palette itself just holds the paint. And most of my mixing is done actually on the paper. So that's one of the things that I teach is how to mix paint, how to mix color. And I do a whole course in that with my students. And that's, that's huge. Um, I don't know if this interests you. I can show you the paint that I use. Would you be interested in seeing this? Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah okay. 
and I can do a very quick demo of the colors that I have chosen. I use about three or four different brands and I'm loyal to certain brands in Windsor and Newton. For instance, their earth colors um, and their cerulean. Those are mandatory in Windsor and Newton. Also their Scarlet Lake. This is a beautiful, beautiful color. And I love this. I use this a lot. I have no cadmiums. I don't use them. I don't use anything like Payne's Gray. I don't use anything like Davies Gray. My neutrals are mixed from my primaries. And so you guys are all artists. You know what I'm talking about, right? Your three primary colors to mix with your grays. And that's pretty much what I'm using um, for this. And that is a Windsor and Newton color. Uh, I also have, of course, Holbein, which I absolutely love. And my Holbeins are here. Let me just get them for you. You know, it's funny. I went to Holbein for one reason and one reason only. Um, they had the best permanent rose. This is the last permanent rose in the history of North America right here because <laughs> they stopped making it. So this is probably worth a king's ransom. But anyway, here it is. So this is a uh, permanent rose. Lately, I have been using a Holbein color called Bright Rose. I'm sure some of you have it if you're using Holbein. And I have quite a bit of Holbein. The problem is lately, we're having a heck of a time getting supplies. I don't know if you are having the same issue with trying to get stuff since the pandemic. The shortages are terrible sometimes. You have to wait. And uh, that can be difficult. I did manage to get a small tube of Oriolin for today. This is Holbein's Oriolin. So that's Holbein, Windsor and Newton. And of course, there's good old Daniel Smith, which is an outstanding paint company. And I love it because they have so many beautiful colors and their color saturation is absolutely fabulous. Anybody here use Daniel Smith? Yes. 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 Good. Well, <clears throat> when you can't find Oriole, and here's a tip, use Hansa, Hansa Yellow. It is not a true primary, but it is a good one. Hansa comes in Hansa Yellow Light and Hansa Yellow Medium. The light is more like a Windsor Yellow or very bright. And it would be similar to Holbein's Permanent Yellow Lemon. Permanent Yellow Lemon. It's a very acidy yellow. It's beautiful. And this one is um, the light. This is here. If I can show you on the palette. You can see the difference. This one is very acidy. This is your Hansi Yellow Light. This is your Hansi Yellow Medium. It's a little warmer. Okay. It's not an Indian yellow or new gamboge, but it's kind of almost in between. So that's that. And I also use, uh, let's see, what else do I use in Daniel Smith? Pretty much everything, manganese blue hue. Okay, which isn't in this painting, but I might put some in. And I also use uh, their, what else? Oh, here's another whole bind that I'm using. This is called Bright Violet. I'll talk to you about that later. And what else do I use? Pretty much anything that I want. Quinacridone Rose, which is permanent rose today. Quinacridone Rose doesn't really replace pure permanent rose. As I said, this is the last one. The colors are slightly different. But this is a true primary, which we don't have anymore. The best cobalt blue that I have found to date, strangely enough, is either the Holbein or this one, which is, I don't know if you have this, you probably do. M. Graham, anybody here use M. Graham? Yeah, some people do. Yep. It's a beautiful paint company. M. Graham and company, he was the colorist for Grumbacher in the United States and he is outstanding. These are very well priced. And I think that these are highly recommended. I'm not sure what art supply stores you have in Illinois, um, but probably you have what Cheap Joe's or Blix, any of those, or uh, what's it called, Jerry's Artorama, any of those. So yeah. you probably can get them. Yeah, and you probably have local art supply stores. Just look online, you will find this. I'm telling you, you're going to love this stuff. It doesn't get hard, it has honey in it. It's wonderful. What hardens paint is oxgall. 
And that ox gall is what makes it very difficult to open a tube if you don't wipe the neck properly, as you probably know. Okay, and one more. Now, this is fairly new. Um, I came across this during the pandemic and somebody recommended it to me. I'm not loving it, but it's good. It's okay in a crunch. This is called Turner Watercolor. Have you seen this? No. no. Okay. Its price point is excellent. Look it up online. It is from Japan. It's not bad. The only problem I have with it is the filler that's in here because all watercolor paint has filler. I'm not sure what it is and they don't tell you. They have to tell you by law the pigment numbers and they do match the other brands, especially um, uh, the other one. Um, what is it? The M. Graham and Windsor and & Newton. And this is their Indian yellow and it's actually quite nice. It's not bad. The quality is artist quality, but it is not the best. I'm not gonna kid you. For $8.98 a tube, you're not gonna get stellar, okay? But you'll get a good paint that you can use that isn't student quality. Any questions so far? By the way, I take questions, so not to worry. Yes, I do. I'm very open to questions because I teach so much. So um, anyone, if you have a question, just ask. Maybe David can help me out there. And uh, if you have, just holler. And what else am I using? I think that's pretty much it. Okay. And the colors that I'm using today, I will show you. Would you like a color swatch? I can do a very quick one before I start the painting, sure. just to show you how these work. Okay. And I'm using opera. Now, I don't know if any of you use opera. I love opera. One of my first, well, it's my one of my favorites. One of my first teachers was the late um, uh, Jack Reed, who was an amazing artist. You've heard of Jack Reed? Jack Reed wrote three books and he passed away. He was one of my teachers when I switched to watercolor. And he told me it was a Margaret Roseman and Bonnie Steinberg color. It was nothing he would ever use. And he didn't. And I loved it. I just fell in love with it. So I started using it. Anyway, here we go. I'm going to actually go into Oriolan today because most of you are familiar with that, I'm sure. And Oriolan yellow is Holbein. See this one? Remember that I showed you in the beginning? It's a beautiful yellow. Holbein is probably my favorite to date for one very good reason. It stays soft. Again, it has no ox gall. <clears throat> ox gall can be purchased, actually. Windsor & Newton makes it. I don't like it. It hardens paint and it makes it very difficult to squeeze out of the tube. So I'm going to use Oriolin. I'm going to be using a little bit of Indian Yellow or New Gamboge. They're interchangeable. We call those analogous colors. Oh, I should mention one more. Sorry, just to go back. This is called PWC. And what they have done, this is called Shinhan. Ever hear of Shinhan in the US? Very popular right now. Also a very good price point. Shinhan. Uh, their head office is in Detroit. And they sent me a kit of about 16 colors. It was very nice. So this is called Bright Violet in Holbein. And sure enough, bingo, they got the same color in PWC. Again, this is a mid quality range, not bad. I use it for certain specialty colors when I can't get this. Okay, there you go. Indian yellow. And I love Indian yellow. It's one of my favorites. I use it for a lot of color. And I'm going to use this permanent rose. Are any of you familiar with bright rose in the Holbein? Anybody? No. No? I'm going to use the permanent rose then, if that's the case. Because I don't think it's going to give you what you want or what you will really see. Maybe in a workshop, I would probably demo it. So here, this is your permanent rose right here. Again, hold on. Look, this is 30 years old, this tube. And it comes out like yesterday. That's Holbein. So stick to this. 
listen, I'm going all the way in a snowstorm to Buffalo to get this. Can you believe it? Anyway. To the Hyatt Art Store. How did you know? I did a demonstration there last year. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love Hyatt. Okay. There we go. There's your permanent rose. Okay, so this one is Holbein. <clears throat> and this one is that Turner because that's all I could get. Everybody was sold out. I spend more time and more gas running around to art supply stores than anything else. It's ridiculous. This is uh, Holbein again. This one is uh, Opera. Now, here we go. One of my favorites. I'm passionate about this color. It's very, very intense, but it certainly has purpose, especially in a spring landscape, which is what I'm doing early, a little bit of a later spring landscape. Do you have snow right now in Illinois? Tomorrow. Six hours. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> oh, we've had, we had a very big blast last week. So we've got a lot of snow sitting here still. This is, uh, but we are Canada, eh? You know? Uh, opera. This is just opera. This is Holbein's opera, okay? Or Daniel Smith opera pink. Same thing, exactly the same pigment colors. I also have now cobalt blue. I use something called a limited palette. I do not pick up everything that you see because I want the colors to mesh and to bind. This is my cobalt. And this is absolutely gorgeous. This is the Daniel Smith. Boy, is this beautiful. Cobalt blue. One of my favorites. And by the way, Oriolan, permanent rose and cobalt blue, okay, are the first triad that watercolorists use called the, the delicate triad. The delicate triad. So my beginners start with those three always. Cobalt blue. And again, this is Daniel Smith. Okay, we have two more, three more. We have Windsor Blue Red Shade, and I'm going to be using the Red Shade, which is nice and dark. And this is Daniel Smith as well. Love this color. Now, you know that Thalo Blue are stains. They are unforgiving. So when people say to you, oh my, you're doing watercolor. Wow, that's so unforgiving. They're right. Some colors are. However, there are ways around this. This is Thalo Blue, also called in Windsor and Newton. <sighs> Windsor Blue. And this is the red shade because I want violets. Okay, next I have Viridian Green. If you note, um, Viridian Green, and I have not sent my full supplies list, but if at any time um, you want me back, I certainly will. That's part of what I do. This is the only green I use. My greens are all made up, always, of the colors that I use in the composition, just so you know. So my secondary colors, like my oranges, my violets, and my greens, for the most part, are made up of colors that I'm using. You know, this is Viridian, a beautiful clear green. Gorgeous. I love it. I do not use phthalo green. I don't like it. It's too garish and it's unforgiving. And if you don't like it, you're stuck with it and it does not go in anywhere. OK, it will not come out. You can make a beautiful green phthalo like if you like it with just your Oriolan and your Thalo Blue. So there you go. Anyway, this is Holbein's Viridian Green. And folks, don't use hues. Hues are terrible. The only hue I use is manganese because manganese hue, uh, real manganese blue was taken off the market 25 years ago because of its toxicity. And it was outlawed in both Canada and the United States through the federal drug, uh, whatever it's called, the FD something. And yeah, the food and drug. 
And so they have a hue and it's similar and it's beautiful. It's uh, very forgiving. It's very transparent and certainly a lovely color in place of cerulean. Okay. And last but not least, one of my other favorites is bright violet in Holbein. Oh God, this is fabulous for this. You're going to love this. It's very, very intense. It's called luminous. And it's just a fun color. Do you need it? No. Okay, this is a nice to have. I have colors that are essential, such as this, this, the permanent rose, maybe the opera, um, the cobalt blue and the phthalo. These are not essential. They're nice to have, but you don't need it necessarily in this painting. And this is the violet. And this is called bright violet. This is both in PWC and in the States, in Illinois, it would be called Shinhan. And this is also in Holbein. So what Shinhan has done is they have copied it. Shinhan is Korean, by the way. Okay, it's made in Seoul. There you go. That's what I'm doing. And do you have any questions, anybody? Anybody in Zoom, please just unmute yourself and ask. Yeah, go ahead. Really, I'm okay. I wondered earlier if Jack Reed is the same person as Charles Reed or a different guy? No, no, totally different. They both passed away, by the way. Yeah, Charles, Charles Reed, unfortunately. Yeah, he passed away about two years ago. Uh, Jack Reed passed away about 15 years ago in Canada. Um, he was amazing. He really was. Uh, very different but you can look up Charles Reed. He had a beginner's book uh, that first started me many, 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 many years ago, 40 years ago. And it was called Let's Get Started. Or maybe it was after that. I don't remember. But it was recommended. And I recommend it to my beginners. Let's Get Started. And after that, he did one on rocks and water and then snow. And unfortunately, he got quite ill and passed away. Charles Reed... Um, I took a workshop with in Buffalo with mm -hmm. Margaret Martin at Margaret Martin's. I think she hosted him. Anybody know Margaret Martin, the late Margaret Martin? She was a mm -hmm. Buffalo artist. She was amazing. Or wishy washy watercolor. That's the one. <laughs> oh, oh, <David. laughs> yeah, I remember that book. It was beautiful. She did some great stuff. She was a wonderful lady and she invited me. So here we are. Okay, I'm just wetting a little bit of the sky. I am using Arches 140 pound. You can also use Fabriano Artistico. The only Fabriano Artistico, um, Fabriano paper I use is Artistico. Okay, there's five grades of Fabriano paper and only the last one Artistico is artist quality, but I really love it and its price point is good. Much better than, um, Arches. Arches is expensive, but what the heck, at least I know what it does. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I am also using masking fluid. I should just have a quick word about that. And the one that I'm using is called Pebio. Mm -hmm. And what did I do with it? I had it here. Here it is. This is it. I'm sure you have this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Pebio drawing gum. Fabulous stuff. Why do I use it? For two reasons, it's insurance. It gives you the white of the paper. You're not going to lose it or lose value. I use it to this day. A lot of artists don't. I don't really care. I use it. I like it. <clears throat> and there you go. And the other thing that I'm going to be using is something that all households have called Saran Wrap. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see this. I have a really interesting technique to show you. Okay. I'm going to let that sit for about a minute and start with the sky. And this is very, very wet. It's pooling. Just going to wipe this around. And uh, my brushes of choice are pretty standard, probably stuff that you use. I have a hake. And I have these. I like these. These are the flat wash, you know, the Windsor and Newton brushes. I have a three quarter inch, I have a one inch, 
I also have a Skyflow brush, which I'm not using right now. This is the Cornell, I forgot what it's called, something Cornell. Um, these are real cheap brushes, but they carry a beautiful point. I've had these for quite some time and boy, are they great. And you know, you don't need to buy very, very expensive uh, Da Vinci brushes or some of the Escada. I don't even know if they're still selling them, mm -hmm. which are like $100 or $200 each. You really don't need them. Uh, I'm using a rigor brush. By the way, that flat wash also comes in a half inch and a quarter inch. Isn't that wonderful? So you can really get into small places with this. I'm just letting that water soak in for about a minute. And I'm going to go into that shortly. And I use a rigor, regular standard rigor, and that's pretty much it. There is um, two specialty brushes that I will show you a little later that I think are great. Would you like me to send that color swatch to you just so you can see them? I can send it to Angie after. She'll be happy to get it, I think. Yes, that'd be great. She's happy already. <laughs> <laughs> um, and down. take screenshots if you want. You can take a screenshot. Feel free. All right, I'm going to start with my cobalt very lightly. And what I'm doing is just basically putting this on the palette, as always. And as you can see, I have very little mixing room. I have about 20 palettes. I have everything from Pike to Stephen Quiller to some of the more uh, Jack Richardson, I have them all. And for some stupid reason, I'm using a 698 palette, which I love. I don't know why. <laughs> As you know, this is gonna fade by about 40%. I'm gonna take some off. I want very, there's very little background in this. And I'm gonna lighten this. This will lighten by 40% anyway, so not to worry bit of a chimney in here. And I just got, um, if you want, I can send, I'm not sure if they're going to do it. I think they will. I've just gotten into the Toronto Watercolor Society annual spring show called Aqua Vision. And uh, I can send you an invite, which I have. I'll send it to Angie because I think it is going to be online. So you can have a look. Okay. Uh, it opens March 28th and goes to just before Good Friday, I think, which is what, the 6th or something? Of I'm not sure. I have the, I just got the invite last night. Look, I just cared that I got into the thing. You know what I mean? So. You never know with this. Bonnie, okay. can I ask? Yes, ma'am. Um, what are you using to swab with? What did I what? To swab, you know, are you using paper towel or cotton, mm -hmm. cotton wool? Kleenex. Kleenex, okay, thank you. Good old. Costco. My home away from home, you know? <laughs> I go there a lot. Yeah, they have good stuff like Kleenex and stuff like that, paper towels. Yes, I do use paper towels sometimes, but not uh, for uh, getting in clouds or just lightning. I'm going to put in some trees in the background very quickly. Yeah, and I'm going to take my cobalt blue and mix it with a little bit of Oriolan and a little bit of permanent rose. And I'm going to get a mid-tone gray. And there we are. wet into wet. I still love wet and wet, don't you? Mm -hmm. Add some yellow to this too. It's not quite strong enough. And just add some permanent rose. I don't want too much background. I like sky. I just did a very large sky painting. There we are. That's a little bit darker. There, that's better. It's a beautiful tree in the background, but I'm not putting it in because I don't have the whole image in, as you can see. This was the original photograph, by the way. 
I do not copy. I have 15 different photographs that I actually used in the process to do this drawing and changed things, move trees. I took true artistic license, left out what I didn't like. There was a big garbage can, took that out. I mean, you wouldn't believe people actually put that stuff. I said, no, guys, you don't have to put it in. You know, like who cares? You know, nobody needs to see the recycling bin or the garbage can, right? Okay, we'll leave that. And I spe but beginners, they want to put in everything they see, right? So, all right, I'm going to start with the body of this house back here, and it is a white house. And as we know, white is not white, but takes on all the colors that are around it. So I'm going to go back in to a very light wash, probably a two value of my permanent rose my aureolin and my cobalt again. And um, I've also been, I've also done this with using manganese blue, but I want a very light, almost a very light gray. I need a little bit more yellow. And there we are. So where's my light coming from, anybody? Right the sky. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and it's coming over so you can see it. And yeah, there's a porch back here. I have left out all of this. This is all you're seeing. See, just from where the brush is to here. Yeah. Okay, because I don't need all this. This is just redundant. Mm -hmm. Especially on a quarter of a sheet of paper. And since you do Zoom, it becomes very difficult to do anything bigger. I don't have a ceiling attached, a uh, camera attached to my ceiling. I use two devices called a Plantronics, which is my microphone and a very good camera. And so I use my iPhone and I use my computer, which is a very large PC and a huge full size screen. So I can see everything that's going on. That will turn white mm -hmm. or give the illusion of white house just by rubbing this in. This is wet and wet on dry. And I'm just going to put in a little touch of yellow just to emulate some sunlight. And one of my biggest joys is cast shadow. I do a lot of cast shadow whenever I can. Okay, we're going to stop right here. All right, there we are. Very light wash. Can you see it okay or not? Yes. yes. Yeah, good. All right, so the side of the house is here, and believe it or not, this is white. Let's just let that dry down for a few minutes, and I'm going to go into... Now, I may have to take a break to dry this down at some point. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good, because I have to dry it so that I can move into, you know, finishing as much as I can. Here is your Oriole in yellow. And I'm going to go into straight painting around the windows. Basically no roof at this point because I don't know what value that's going to be. Bonnie, so, what do you mean by straight? Sorry? Straight. You mean I'm sorry? Dry? I can't hear you. You had asked what does straight painting mean? Yes, direct painting right on the paper. Oh, direct. Okay. Direct. All right. I'm not I'm not wetting anything. Wet on to dry. Wet on to dry, basically. Yeah, that's it. And I'm going into a little bit of Indian yellow. So I'm kind of doing the charging thing, you know, where you're putting in sort of two colors and letting them merge. And I, I find that very, very interesting because you get all sorts of combinations that you would not normally get back into Oriolin. Push this back after. Yeah, see, that sky is exactly the right value now. There it is. It's coming. And back into this. And this is my Oriolin. Oh, Oriolin. People say to me, yeah, you want me to buy those three colors. They're the most expensive. Because 
I know they are, but they are pure. You cannot make anything from cobalt. Nothing makes cobalt, nothing makes permanent rose really. Well, that's not entirely true. Quinacridone rose today is permanent rose. But oreolin, by the way, there are 15 different kinds of oreolin. I don't know if you know this. They have various names. They're called azo yellow. Uh, they can be called cobalt yellow, which means that they have some cobalt in them. Outlawed by the state of California, by the way. I don't know why, but anyway. And you have 15 different versions. So when you buy Windsor & Newton's, it might be different than Holbein's or Daniel Smith. Have you ever noticed that? They're all slightly different. Doesn't yeah. mean anything. You can buy any of them, okay? They are absolutely subject to two industries, the car industry and the art industry. That's one of the reasons it's so expensive. Oriolan, it's going down. Let's just have some fun with this. Let that dry. And I'm going to go in. My colors are mixing beautifully right on here. You can see them. And uh, there's not a heck of a lot of labor involved in this. I'm going to just move around these windows. Go in here. And both sides, shadow and so on, are exactly the same at this point because I will go into shadow later. All right. And we also have a little bit of trim up here, which is white. I'm going to leave that right now and go into the roof under here. Same thing, oriole and yellow. I have four stages that I usually do with the painting. One is called the underpainting. Local color is the next one, which means the actual color of the object. So say you're painting red apples in snow. Okay, uh, sorry, in sunlight. Snow's on my mind. You have red apples sitting on a table in sunlight. So you paint the underpainting first. You get in your warms, and then you start blocking in your color in the actual object. And the color... Be say it's red apples, you start putting in your reds, then your shadow pattern. And then, okay, your red apples have shadow. That's stage three. And then you have what? Detail. Okay, so that's the blemishes in the apple, the pith, the core, and the cast shadow. And that will give you a complete and concise painting. I'm going to add a little bit of Indian on this side. And I'm going to go into the driveway. And this is almost dry brush. This is warm, so I'm going to go into this very quickly. And this is almost like dry brush. I'm just going to scrub this right in. Use some water to extend. Redate it. Go into some permanent rows. Just minimally. I like permanent rows. I think it's beautiful. I still have colleagues that are still using colors like Rose Matter Genuine, which was Jack Reed's favorite, and I didn't like it. I thought it was awful. Very insipid color. And he said, yes, because it's natural. I said, I don't care. I don't like it. Anyway. <laughs> Here's your cobalt. This will turn quite light but with a little bit of warmth which is the color of this gravelly driveway there it is okay so far not not bad you have to start filling in stuff okay so what i have here 
is quite wet. I just want this to dry down a little bit and I'm going to start the foliage. Any questions? No. no? Okay. No. Do you guys use these sponges at all? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sponge. yeah yes. good. Mm -hmm. okay. I like those. You know what's great about watercolor, about painting, period, about being an artist? No matter what country you go to, no matter where you are, we all share the same thing. It's one language. Isn't it amazing? It really is. All right, I'm going to go into some really nice greens in here and start with that. I'm going to start with the yellow. This is, again, wet on dry. I'm going to start with Oriolan. I'm going to start the grass first. And I want to get into some various blues. So if our light is coming from up here, then it would make sense that it gets slightly lighter here, slightly darker as it moves toward this area. And I'm just using a one inch flat wash. Nothing fancy. Look, there's my white house. Remember how gray it was? See? And here is your color. Um, I also have taken uh, there is a university in Toronto called Ryerson University. It used to be called Ryerson Polytechnical Institute. And they had a course that I took many, many years ago on color and design. And I thought, that sounds good. Well, I hated it. It was all on chemistry and physics. and ugh. Anyway, I passed it. I got through it. I don't know. Anyway, what the heck? I'm the kind of person that if I start something, I finish it. But i got to tell you, it came in handy. It started really getting me going on how we see things, how we mm -hmm. see light. And I suppose when you're very young, you don't really appreciate it. Am I right? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I have to take this, you know. Well, you do. Okay, and I'm going to leave some holes because I'm going to be putting in cilia. Does everybody know what cilia is? Cilia, S-C-I-L-I-A. There are these little flowers, look. It's so, oh, yeah, the little blue. You get them in the spring, it's a ground cover. It's okay. purple. I think your climate is very similar to ours, eh? In, yeah. In, yeah, it should be. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and a little bit of Indian yellow. I will try to finish this if I can, but if I don't, I will send you not only the finished one when I do finish it, which won't be long, but also the finished painting that I already have here. So you can see it, would that be good? Yeah. And here we go. And I'm just going in with some Indian yellow. Again, this is just the underpainting, right? And I've left holes. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I have masking fluid there. But um, no, you folks seem wonderful. I don't know, you remind me of the people in Winnipeg. Maybe it's the Midwest, right through Canada and the US, same thing. Nice, friendly people, lovely. Yeah. Oh yeah, we are we wonderful. Are. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, they're very helpful. They're so nice. Um, just lovely, they wanna do everything for you. If you haven't been to Winnipeg, it is an interesting city. It's half French, half English. But come to Toronto. Anybody here been to Toronto? Yes. 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 I love Toronto. 
Right. Yeah, I know what you mean. I do too. It's my home. My daughter worked there years ago and at the Sears building, the one that's kind of like looks upside down. That Sears building turned into a loft. Oh, really? My daughter lived in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're going for over a mill now. Oh, really? Wow. Yep. The Sears, Sears merchandise building. Here it is. This is your cobalt blue down here. And I'm going to add a touch of permanent rose just to get a little bit of depth on the bottom. This is the border. It is green, but I want it to meld. Your colors have to relate to all three planes of the painting. That is important. And I may just lose that edge. Look, that's a nice warm orange, beginning mm -hmm. of an orange. Do you see that? Yeah. And this is going to complement some of the blues that are going to go in here. Okay. I'm going to switch to my half inch brush and go into some of those windows. And I'm going to go into my first dark gray. When and you say gonna... all three planes, Bonnie, do you mean foreground, middle ground, background, or what? Yes, ma'am. That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, notice I haven't touched the roof. I never do the roof until after the painting is dry. That determines the value scale mm -hmm. that I have to use for the roof. Yes, it appears to be one value, but it isn't. Your light is always on the top, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is nice. It's dull. It's not into full color yet, but I want to get the windows and the foliage in first. So I'm going to go into a little bit of cobalt blue. And this time, I'm going to go into um, a little bit of Viridian green on the other side of my palette. Cobalt blue, Viridian green, and permanent rose should give me a nice gray. Now, be careful with those reds. Those reds can take over, you know. But I have learned one thing. And one thing is um, if you want your grays to really sparkle your neutrals, especially your darks, put in a little bit of red into all of your neutrals, like your blacks, whatever, it'll glow. It really will. By the way, there's one good book on color that I can recommend if you really love color. And it's called The Transparent Color Wheel. Some of you may even have it. It's by Jim Kosvanek, K-O-S-V-A-N-E-C. And there's a big color wheel inside when you open it up. Uh, now, it's been out of print. You know those Northlight books? They put them in, and then they stop printing them like two months later. And but you can find it on one site called Abe Books. Try Amazon first. And if Amazon doesn't work, try Abe Books. A B E Books. It's one of the world's largest uh, distributors of uh, used books, and you can find a copy on there. So that might help. I'm going to go into a little bit of Thalo Blue. and push these windows back. There it is. I never use Payne's gray. I teach my students to make it with French ultramarine and so on because I don't like using tubed neutrals. They should correspond to the paints that you're using in your composition. Okay, there it is. All mm -hmm. right, so that gray is in there. And I'm going to go into this area. Same thing. Viridian green. Little permanent rose. By the way, that's a great gray. 
-hmm. and you can add some cobalt as well. Just change it up a little bit. And if it needs to be darker, I can add phthalo after. Don't want it that dark, not off the bat. Darker here. Windows, by the way, in the center of the house should always be a little bit lighter because you can look through and you should be able to see right through to the other side. Even in a case like this where there's shadow. When that's dry, I'll glaze it. Here we are. I'm going to go in and just earmark where some of these shadow patterns are. Now, that door is interesting. So if you take a look at it, um, when it's dry, I would lift out some of the windows inside. I'm going to start with Oriole in yellow again. A little dirty. Let's just, I'm using a half inch wash brush, by the way, because a half inch wash brush will allow me to get in here. See, this is good. This is just dry paint, wet and wet on dry. A little bit of Viridian green again. Okay, Cookie. <laughs> Okay, and a touch of Thalo. <coughs> Thalo is Windsor, by the way, the Windsor blue red shade. Okay, it's not to confuse anybody, but Sir Windsor and Newton sure has confused everybody. I have so many students that have gone out and bought Windsor Blue Red Shade, Windsor Blue Green Shade, and then Thalo Blue Red Shade and Windsor Blue Green Shade. When I've told them, no, you don't have to buy all of that because Windsor Blue Red Shade and Green Shade are Thalo Blue. Windsor and Newton call their colors Windsor. That's all. So you can see how the color reacts, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. I haven't used my opera yet. I'm excited. <laughs> get into that. Oh, yeah. Let's just get into a little bit of permanent rose just to gray this. And there we are. Let it run. Let it do its thing. I don't care what it does. Sometimes those happy accidents are what make a painting. Don't you agree? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Going to get into some orange. And Indian yellow and opera. <clears throat> well, I haven't been to Chicago yet, but I am certainly going to try and come in the spring. I want to see your institute, art institute or something of Chicago. Is that what it's called? Yeah. I want to see that. I haven't seen it. Ever? My understanding is you need a week. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great. That is opera. Yes, ma'am. Here, let me show you. Take your Indian yellow and put down your opera and charge it. Charging, allow it to paint to um, just mix right on the paper. And I do this for 90% of my paintings. Look, there it is. Mm -hmm. Easy peasy, see? <laughs> if you want it more diluted, just run a damp brush and just extend. So you can blend it if you want. But that's a great thing to do. 
And so you're allowing it to paint itself, but at the same time, helping it a little bit. So you sort of conquer two things at once. You know, very often I say to myself, um, you know, it's a battle. Who's going to win, me or it, you know? <laughs> Bonnie, yeah. when you when you do yes, come here and go to the Art Institute, don't ignore the uh, tapestry exhibits that they have down in the basement. Don't ignore it or do ignore it. Do not ignore it. Oh, it is okay. fascinating as all get out. Wow. Okay. You are really well. I hope to come and to see it. Um, there we are. Look, I'm going to let that dry down. That's pretty wild, but it is going to dry. You can <laughs> see already here, this is the underpainting of the door. And that's going to be quite dark in a little while. All I want to do is cover this and get into the green, and then I can dry it down. Any questions? Do you ever use a hair dryer? Yes, then I'm going to use that shortly. <laughs> what did you use to, to do the black drawing lines? I'm sorry? What did you use for drawing the black lines? Oh, to... just a graphite pencil. One okay. of these. Stedler. So you, don't seem, you don't seem to be um, concerned that your pencil lines are showing through your color. Nope. Not at all. Yeah. Not, a lot of my paintings have pencil line. Um, but then again, so did the group of seven. I don't know if you know who the group of seven were. Yes. Very, very famous artists in Canada. They put Canada on the map, in fact. Yes. Uh, but so did a lot of American artists. I saw an incredible exhibit at the AGO of your some of your post um post way post impressionists, including Motherwell, who was a little weird, but anyway, um, and <laughs> these other guys. And even Helen Frankenthaler, I think is her name. I saw a lot of pencil line in her stuff. A lot of artists use it. It's not a big deal. It's part of it. It can be part of the process. It shouldn't take over, but it can be part of the process. Let's throw a little bit of blue in here, shall we, and have some fun. I tell my students, if you're not having fun, stop. Mm -hmm. Have a good time with it. Don't you agree? No. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes I have to do the <laughs> Some of the complementary color in here. We'll certainly tone this down just a little bit, which is nice. So I'll be able to put some blue in there. Otherwise, it's a little wild. Okay, I'm going to be doing the underpainting here with the foliage, which is just basically, I'm going to minimize it and just put in some greens. There we are. Oriole and yellow, once again, much brighter, coming into light. And I'm going to put in a little bit of Indian yellow. I want the light to be on the top of these to some degree, even though it's in shadow. So I like to sort of scrub this in a bit. And I'm going to go into a little bit of my um, Viridian. Now, I don't usually do foliage with Viridian, but for some reason, this painting told me to put in Viridian. Mm. You know, they do talk to you, right? Mm. <laughs> Just don't tell anybody about it. <laughs> there we are. David, do you want to take a break? Yeah, we're going. Oh, just one minute. Hold on. If you could just give me one minute, please. I just want to finish this so I can go back and dry this down. No, that's okay. Perfect. I was just going to wait until you need to dry. Then we'll take a break. Yes. Just give me one minute. So far, is this okay for you guys? Is this? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh, really yeah. Great. Okay. I just have to tell you one funny thing. It was a wonderful artist we had in Toronto. His name is Rex Beanland. He's from Calgary, Alberta. And he said, I know how you guys feel. It's 3 a.m. and you have finally finished this painting that you've been toiling with for three weeks. 
and you got it done and you're so excited you want to call the president of the united states the queen <laughs> queen of england at that time the queen of england and your best friend and everybody else and and your minister and your church group and you go to sleep for two hours and wake up at 6 a.m and somehow this bad fairy has replaced this beautiful beautiful fabulous <laughs> magnificent painting with this monstrosity has anybody <laughs> encountered that i know i have <laughs> I will talk to you about the mantle test later and what I do to counteract that because I'm tired of having that fight. Okay, this is your phthalo blue at the bottom, and we're going to let that dry. Okay, go ahead. And now you can have a break. Okay. okay. Am I whacking you guys out? I hope not. No, 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 no. we were already whacked out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're already whacked out. Okay. I'm going to go and dry this down. Okay. Give me about five minutes. Is that all right? Five minute break, and I'll be back. Actually, when do you go till? Is this okay, the time wise? Yeah, yeah, we go until about 11.30. Well, I don't know what time it is here. Uh, there. It's uh, quarter to 11, yes? Yeah. Can we go maybe a few minutes later, just so I can finish? I want to finish. All right. I've scheduled my whole day around you, so I love doing these demos. They're fun. I like meeting new people. Okay. Anyway, folks, um, at the end, of, just before you log off, I will tell you about an upcoming trip that I'm having, which I'm inviting you all to uh, in Newfoundland, Canada. If you have never been, I strongly suggest that you try it. It is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. It is um, very similar to the west coast of Ireland part of it, if you've ever seen that. But anyway, more later. So what we've done is we have now covered it except for the roofs. And we'll go into some detail now. And I'm going to start the roof because it does need a little bit of color. And I'm going to go into sort of a, a violety gray. And the first color that I'm going to be using is actually, believe it or not, an aureole in yellow. What I did with the driveway is what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to start with some aureole in yellow and just go into that on dry paper. It is going to be a wet and wet on dry. The yellow is your favorite color? <laughs> mm, in this painting? <laughs> no, actually, it's purple. <laughs> Pink. Well, I just finished a whole series of flower paintings for some of my classes, and we use things like opera and the bright rose and... Mm. I did ranunculus and uh, roses and things like that. There we are. I'm going to go into a little bit of Viridian green. Yeah, this is a yellow house and it has a great deal of character. The gentleman that owned this house um, was thrilled and I think he wants to finally buy, finally buy this painting. He heard about it and contacted me, so I have to go see him. People like paintings of their houses. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go into bright violet. What does it look like with this? We're going to be starting to put some in. It's a very intense color, but mixed with viridian green will give you a very nice gray. Just watch. I know you're probably thinking, what is she doing? Don't worry. It comes out. I got fresh water, too. Again, just knowing what makes what, I think, helps. And there's always help. That's why that Jim Cosvenek book is good, if you can get it. I don't know how much it is. Somebody told me it's on 
it's out for a hundred and something, a hundred and seventy-five dollars. I don't think so. I think you can buy a used copy somewhere and try it. What's the name of his book again? The Transparent Something? Color Wheel. Oh, thank you. C O L O R, spelt your way. And uh, in Canada, we spelt color C O L O U R. Don't ask me why. It's French. No, it's not French. It's English, actually. Um, it's stupid. But anyway, what can you do? <laughs> I'm not going to fight with them, you know? It's been that way for 200 years. It's British. It could be. It could be. I don't know. Um, Ontario is not part of it. Well, where I live is certainly not French, but I love going to Quebec. I have taught there as well. Hmm. And I'm going to take the same color and just do this roof. This is the underpainting. So already it's starting to hang together. Now that's light, which is good because I want to get into some more color after. And just a little bit more violet up here and leave that. So there's going to be cast shadow and everything else. All right. Now we have to get into some of the detail very quickly. And I'm going to start going into darker grays. And I'm going to go into my bright violet. This is a great combination. Thalo blue. Or you could use permanent rose and thalo blue. Same thing. All right. It just won't be as intense and a little bit of yellow. So again, you have a yellow, a blue, and a red to make a gray. And the important thing is that your dark blue is going to give you your dark gray. See, look, I'll show you. Look. There it is. All right. So the darker the value, of course, the darker the color. So let's go into some of these up here. And I'm just going to pop in a little bit of cobalt. Laura said that the book is available on Amazon for $42. Bingo. Wow. Great. If you can get it, it's fabulous. It's really good. He's a very good artist too, by the way. I don't know if he's still painting. I mean, the book is old, but I love it. That's a little bit heavy, but we'll see what happens when it starts to dry. There it is. Bingo. <clears throat> and um, I mean, there's so many books out there, you know, there, there's so much stuff that you can, you can get. You just have to know what you're buying. <laughs> One of my favorite books, and even master artists use this, is a book by a guy called Gordon McKenzie. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have it? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's a great book. What's it called? Uh, well, there's two of them. One is called um, The Watercolorist Essential Notebook by Gordon McKenzie, M-A-C-K-E-N-Z-I-E. And the other one is called The Watercolorist Essential Landscape Notebook. And now he has combined both of those books into one called The Complete watercolorist notebook which has everything in there a lot of technique a lot of color and um, a lot of uh, as I said even you know really 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 um, experienced artists just love the book they think it's great and they use it for teaching if they're teaching I use it a lot for my students and there's great exercises in there just to sort of combine things. I'm just putting in some of these windows very quickly. I'm going to pop in some more color. This is still slightly damp. I'm going to leave it. All right. What I'm going to be doing now is a little bit of avant-garde. I'm going to be spattering. And I'm going to show you exactly what to do. I'm going to be taking cobalt blue. Heavy. Fresh paint. 
Beside it, I'm going to put in my opera. Whoops. It's not giving me too much room here. Let's put that in right there. There it is. A little bit of bright violet. Interesting. And what am I going to do with that? I'm going to spatter and I'll show you how. Just get a Kleenex here. Mm -hmm. This is fun stuff. I really like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Blue purple ground cover comes out in about April or May. I mean, it might come out sooner in your area because you're a little bit farther. No, I don't know if you're farther south than Toronto. I'm not sure. And cobalt. We're going to let that dry down and then start working some negative shapes in through here. But that's pretty. I think this is nice. So you don't have to get into, I keep it loose. I paint very loosely and then tighten up as I move along. Any questions? And please, I do welcome them, seriously. Is it Arches ice press or cold press? No, cold press, 140 pound. I don't use hot press very often. I don't like it. It's good for flowers, I guess. Sorry? Is your paper stretched? Oh, oh nope. Straight just, on. Just tape down? I'm sorry? Just tape down or is it a Yes, ma'am. Just tape down. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Pop in a little bit of violet in there. And that roof dried very light, so I will have to go back in after. But the cast shadow should help. We'll see what it looks like after. All right, this is light. I'm going to have to let this dry. But in the meantime, because we're going to run out of time and I don't want that to happen, I'm going to go into some saran. I want to show you this. This is a fabulous technique. You're going to love this. You can use this in your work. I was at a workshop, and I learned how to do this. And it's my colleague, Margaret Rosemans. And I started using it and it turned out to be extremely effective. Okay. I'm going to mix up. I always start with the yellow, this time a little bit of Indian. And beside it, some Oriolan. So you see my colors are never mixed, as I said, on the palette ever, 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 ever. And I like them to mix on the paper, put down some Viridian green. And here's the other key. If you really want your painting to really pop, use fresh color, each and every painting. I don't care if you did it yesterday. Yes, you can wet your paint and so on, but it won't be the same as fresh color. It really won't. And I'm gonna pick this up onto some Saran. At the same time, I'm going to put down Thalo Blue Windsor Sorry. and a little bit of permanent rose. This time I'm just going to mix it in. It's going to give me a nice dark. This is just wonderful. Look, it gives you the whole thing. There you are. Okay. And so these are the bushes that you can start putting in and you can change the color. And it's saran. I like saran because it does many things. It can stretch. So yes, you can use glad wrap and all that other stuff. But I think this is the best if you can find it. I don't know if you have saran wrap. Do you have saran wrap? Yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. You know, she's super. great. Yeah, my local grocer who's just like a block away wanted to know why every week I was buying. He said, what do you do with that stuff? I said, oh, well, I put away a lot of 
a lot of stuff. I preserve a lot of stuff, so I really need it. <laughs> I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Did you put the paint on a surface and then dip, you know, dip the saran wrap in it, or did you put the paint on the saran wrap and crinkle it up? I have it crinkled. Here, I'll show you again. Well, we step can't see step. what you're doing. Yes, yes, you okay. you're doing. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take some, whoops. No, not like that. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so you take a piece of saran wrap, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, I've even you done trees with this because it stretches. So what yeah. I'm doing is crinkling it, see? Mm -hmm. So that I have all these ridges. Okay. Here is the paint on the palette. And I will show you step by step. You can't see from there. Oh, there we go. Now we can. Okay, just a minute. Let me get some more in here. I've used up all of this. It doesn't matter if this is uh, somewhat gungy right now. No. Okay, but this is my... Add some viridian. Okay. Dry your brush down. I'm going to add some thalo. I want it slightly darker. And of course, if I add the permanent rose, I know that I'm going to get the dark <laughs> because thalo ro thalo um, what is it thalo is is it's going to take over. You know what I mean? It's going yes. to encompass. So what you want to do is add, but I do this, I do a full extent of this in, in any workshop that I do and teach people how to go about this. So it's kind of nice. And if you want, you can even add some cobalt. There you go. I did a whole painting like this in Mackinac Island. Does anybody know where Mackinac Island is? That painting sold. I can't show it to you. It's online though. Here you so go. Dip it onto the palette. You just yes. Oh yes, it's dipped beautiful. into the palette. Look. There you go. Thank you. That's clever. <laughs> oh, I think you're gonna love this. And I'm gonna go into some nice greens. And I still have to do the white. I'm going as fast as I can. But I promise I will send you the finished painting just in case. Architectural paintings do take a little longer, but I thought you would be intrigued by this. And this is the subject I chose. So look, isn't that wonderful? All right. Now, I want to show you something else. There is forsythia here, at least in my head. So I put in forsythia. Because why? Because I like it. No other reason. All right. So I'm going to put in forsythia. You know what for Scythia is, yeah? Yeah, you know, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. See, not only do you have to become an artist, you have to become a botanist, you have to become a business person, you have to be, oh my God. Anyway, you become a whole ball of wax, right? Let's put in for Scythia. So I'm going to double load to make this a little faster. Oriolan and Indian yellow together. Watch. See, two yellows. It should be thick. The consistency of toothpaste. Think of toothpaste. It's mm. buoyant. It holds its shape. Now, it wasn't in this uh, particular picture, but as I told you, I think in the beginning, I combine both photographs, three in fact, to maintain this which is fantastic because it gives you all of the color that you more need. interesting than the garbage cans would be Don't you think? <laughs> i think so yeah definitely more interesting than the garbage cans and you can put in your yellow and there's your direct complement to your violet I'm going to fill this with some green, some negative shapes, and dry it and take off the mask. Okay, there you are. Now, I also want a little bit of red in there, so I'm just going to pop in just a touch of, watch, of your opera. 
nice. to get the orange. Mm. Wait, is that Saran again, or is she using yeah. Yeah, Saran. Saran. Saran wrap, yep. same thing. I'm using the same piece. I'm just adding a little bit of opera to that. Now mm. I've overdone it, but it's just for emphasis. This is starting to connect the whole painting. Do you see that already? Oh, well, there you go. And let's go into these, of course, are cast shadows. Get into a little bit of blue up here. And of course, I have the uh, the dark. The roof is still very wet. Mm. I'll do what I can. I'm going to put some greens now in between here. <coughs> Wipe this stuff away and go into just plain, ordinary green. I'm not even sure the bushes were like this, but who cares? Um, as I say, I put in what I like when I like it and change it. It's never a direct copy. Here's my cobalt. Here's your two greens. There you are. I'm using the tip of this brush. That's what I love about these brushes, eh? They've got five surfaces, see? You've got this, 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 and two flat flat ends, which is fantastic. And um, it gives you a lot of, you know, leverage. And don't forget, you can go back in and stamp at the end, which is what I do very often when I want to um, complete the painting. Um, stamp what? Did you say stamp? Stamp? Stamp, stamp. Yeah, I can stamp some more yellow back in here. The when this is dry, just on the top. No, oh, with the brush. That saran. With the brush or with saran wrap? No, no, with saran. Oh, okay. I just never heard it called stamping before. And right. if you don't want to use saran, that's why I asked you, you can use this. This is just a regular, um, what do they call these? Sea smudge. Uh, you just wet it and you dip it into the paint, you know? But here's the green. I'm going to add some more here. I'm going to paint this in. This is your nice forest green because you do have grass, right? <laughs> well, in about eight weeks, he'll have this whole covered, this whole area of his yard totally covered with the cilia. You plant it, though. You have to plant it. I think it's a, a perennial. And here's some yellow because we're moving back into light. <laughs> And I'll show you the tree trunks after that, but this is great. And then the, I won't be able to finish the house. This is still wet. That needs to have one more value change. We'll see how far we get. Okay. And I'm just going to paint in some dark green in here. Yeah, that's kind of a cool thing, eh? With the saran, you like that? Yeah. 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 Especially the green. Mm -hmm. So you can add some green through here in the negative spaces just to set up the tree trunk and that would work as well. And you don't have to go to any song and dance about it. Just put in as much as or as little as you like. You see, that makes a difference. <clears throat> I think this is coming along. There's a bit of a shadow on this side, and I'm going to go back into a gray. If I take that green, which is what I have here, and just add. So in other words, what I am doing is I am putting in my grays with the colors that are already that I can mix on my palette. So I mix my yellows, my reds, and my blues together, and I will get a gray. Whoops. So only my neutrals are mixed on my palette. Not always, but 90% of the time. It gives me a chance to get all of these wonderful combinations. Otherwise, everything is flat. How many of you fight with the flatness? That's a big one for me. So 
same gray under here, just a little bit of shadow pattern. Mosses that are coming mm -hmm. now. And I'm going to go into just a touch on this roof. I need that same gray. A little bit darker so I can add phthalo. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I have one student, an old elderly lady, lovely lady. She's 93. She comes online. She's amazing and says to me, I don't like phthalo blue. I said, why? She said, it's an evil color. It ruins everything you <laughs> <I> have. <laughs> It's cold this morning. Yeah. And she won't use it. And I said to her, if you're living this long and you're still manning, you can do whatever you like. <laughs> <laughs> and I never argue with her. I'm using a set square. Yeah, I love it. I like it. Okay, this is a just you buy these in any art supply store. Staples has them actually. But here's the trick when you go into Staples and you ask for a set square, honest to God, the people working in there are like 25, 20, I don't know, 10. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Unless you took drafting in school, they will not know what it's called. So call call it a Mars triangle. Okay, because they will know what that is. I'm serious. Yeah. They won't know what you're talking about. Um, these kids today do everything on the computer. I know because I have a daughter that's a graphic artist who, in fact, is head of a, she's a senior art director for a major insurance company. And she uh, also didn't know anything about perspective at all. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> Nothing. I don't know what they teach them. But anyway, there we are. Okay, so I'm going to go under here as well, get in some more grays, and then start the big finish as much as I can with some tree trunks and show you a couple of combinations and some cast shadow. Oh, yeah. A little bit of violet under there just to set that up. This does need to be much darker. I don't know how much time we have. You have to tell me, please. About 15 more minutes. Oh boy. Okay. Sorry. I'll do what I can. <laughs> it's like beat the clock, you know? Um, Don't rush. Don't rush. Well, oh, I'm rushing. I'm rushing. Don't worry. I haven't even taken off the mask, but what the heck? We'll get there. Um, this is starting to come alive. I still have to do all of these windows. As I'm looking, I want to put some more dark up here. So I'm going to take another bit of saran and just put that into the shadow. Point. And I'm not going to use the dark, um, just that same combination. But in fact, I'm going to be using bright violet. This is great with just viridian green. Uh, bright violet is considered a red, not a blue, because it has a red base. It's a violet, but it is in the red family. So even just in here, we'll give it a glow without it being stagnant. That makes a difference. There it is. Okay. So let's go into, um, this is still very wet. Oh, <laughs> I hate that. Okay, let's just go into some more grays. Your grays are very important because they, in fact, tie the painting together. Without them, you don't have a painting. You have nothing. You have a bunch of color with absolutely no adhesive. Yeah. Okay, if you want, if you will excuse me, I can dry this down and then take off the masking fluid and show you yes. one tree and some cast shadow. Would that be all right? Yes. Yes. I think that's important. I want you to see this, okay? Sure. Yep. yep. Are you okay with that? With yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. okay. I 
Hello, everybody. <laughs> this meeting is being recorded. Oops. Make sure that you dry down each stage, please. Um, I can't emphasize that enough. Too many people allow it and are in such a rush. I don't know why to get the damn thing finished. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to give you a prize if you're the first one in, you know? Or you can miss your deadline. Well, that's just... well, I suppose there are times, but still, you can see what's happening now. Look. Yeah, and I'm going to take this off. You'll be able to see the design a little more clearly. And of course, there's a lot of fine detail that can be finished. I minimize that though, folks, I really do. I don't think the crux of the painting can honestly be, if it's if the painting is lost, I would know it by now and I would stop and probably start again. If the painting is doing fine, then putting in a lot of detail can honestly hamper it too. Look, there's your light and I'll show you the cast shadow. There, it's pretty much all off. Yes, there's still some finishing here. Let's do one of the trees. Sorry, was there a question? Yes. What did you use to remove the PVO? Here. Masking oh, fluid oh, eraser. Oh, it's called. <laughs> no, it doesn't come with this. This is just from years of buildup. But here it is. They actually come white. It's a little square. It's yeah, called I, a misket I, eraser. I, They're about two ninety eight. Yeah, in the yeah. art supply store. I'm sure everybody has one of these. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, if you don't get one, they're fabulous. Yeah, you don't want to use your fingers. It's terrible to get this stuff oh, off. Okay, let me do one tree for you and just show you how that works in light. So our light is coming from the light from the right. Absolutely. Let's start with Indian yellow. And then I'll get into a cast shadow for you, even though it's premature, but at least you'll see it. And let's do that. Okay. So I'm going to start with Indian yellow. And this is, again, direct. I call it direct painting, but it's basically just on to the paper, except I don't like that brush. I hate it. I don't know why I even have it. Um, I need to throw anything out. No, it's just it's lost its um, sharpness, you know, the point. And when that happens, I just chuck them. They're very inexpensive. Now, I have some very expensive brushes. I have the Robert Simmons. A uh, sky flow. And I have some uh, Scotta brushes. I taught at the Art Gallery of Ontario. And they bought me when I left a, um, oh, what is it called? Yes, it's called a Scotta. It's from Spain. And it was a, a number 30. I don't know. I think it's a, a pure gold sable. Is that what it is? Gold sable? And it's probably worth a mortgage. But, um, <laughs> I don't like it. It's too, it doesn't suit the way I paint. I have it. I look at it now and then go nice, nice, yeah, you know, but. <laughs> they sell for about 300. I would have been happy with a gold sable synthetic for 398, you know. <laughs> Here we are. So I'm going to start blending in a little permanent rose. Yeah. And here we are.
and show you what happens with the bright violet at the end. And I will do one cast shadow, but yes, I will finish this. Don't worry, I promise. <laughs> have my word. There's not that much actually. There's just some darks that have to be put in that aren't in yet. And I use something called a water bead. I'm sure you know what that is. You just pull water, look, and it will follow, see? Here's your Oriole in yellow. And I'm going to start getting into some darks along the tree trunk. And let's put in a little bit of, let's let dry for just a minute. A little bit of cobalt blue on the shadow side with some violet. Just let it dry for about a minute. Turn into a beautiful gray. So anytime you are using your red, yellow, and blue, you're gonna end up with a gray, which is wonderful with very little effort. It's turning too green. Let's get some red in there. And I'm gonna add some violet as well. So this color would and this value would not be possible if I had not masked it, unless I paint very, very carefully and around everything. And I don't because I'm not that careful. I'm actually quite sloppy. You should see my studio, my God. Um, <laughs> so I'm not that careful. I don't want to be that careful. I find it in ham it hampers what I'm doing. Just let that dry down. I may have to change it and I'm going awfully fast. So I just want to make sure. Okay, just let that dry down for a few minutes. Does that give you an idea anyway? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a rigor brush. I'll put in a couple of darks for you. There still has to be more green in here. I'll do one or two before putting in one cast shadow. And I can put that in right here. This is Aureole in yellow again. Yeah, David's right. I do like yellow a lot. Um, just in this painting. Not as much as you think. I mean, I do like it, but you know. Here's some cobalt. I like other colors too. I use a lot of manganese and cerulean. And what I wanna do is just add a little bit of shadow pattern here with some dry brush very quickly. So I'm gonna take a three quarter inch brush and just add some yellow, some cobalt, and I'm gonna do some dry brush with this and some phthalo. So two blues, one yellow, so all of these greens, you see, mix because they're all part of the painting. As soon as you use a tubed green, you're in trouble outside of Viridian, which is very easy to blend, like sap green and all that. That's opaque, by the way, and I don't like it, so I don't use it, but. There's another one called um, Hooker's Green. That's mm -hmm. fine. It's very similar to Viridian. It just has more yellow in it. That's okay. It's a transparent. In my book, if you're going to use a green, then make sure it's transparent. Mixes well mm -hmm. with yellows. And just get a nice grounding in there. And I'm going to add just a touch of violet. And here it is. Mm -hmm. 
that violet will carry your eye right through the whole painting. Okay, how? Watch. I don't know if this is dry enough, but I can certainly try. And I'm going to put in one cast shadow as promised. Let me just get a tissue and wipe all this stuff off. So I'm going to use the bright violet because I like it a lot. And I'm going to add some cobalt to that on the palette. So again, two colors. And maybe I'll just do one. Uh, what is dry? Nothing. Um, <laughs> we'll try this. We'll try this one. Oh, that's too narrow. I want to do a big one for you so you get to see it. Maybe this one. Let's do what we can. What the heck, right? Is that a roof, Bonnie, in the lower right? I haven't done this yet. That's a chimney. Lower right. Is that a roof? This? No, yeah. no, this is a walkway. It's a driveway. Yeah. Okay. But it looks like it has a step in it. It does. There's steps from the house going down. No, I meant in the driveway. Right there. Once she gets the shadows in, it'll look like a driveway, probably. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't have the shadows in yet. That's what I'm trying to do now. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no worries. You don't have to do the last because we are running over. So let's give one last wash and we'll have to give it up. From there. One last brush and I'll stop. I promise. <laughs> you can even shut me off. Okay, don't go away though. <laughs> I'm going to double load and just pull this color. I'm using a three quarter brush. This is it, the end. I'll just watch. Now, this should be over this. This is wet, so I can't actually finish it. But just so you can see the color, and this will dry much lighter. Up here, it'll dry very, very light because this is where your light is, right? So you're going to put this down, and this will follow right into the grass. You can see it from here. Look. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As I said, I will be sending this to you, so you'll see it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie, so much. Thank you. Thank, yeah. you. Thank, Thank you. Well, I hope that you enjoyed it. I don't. Uh... Great. Loved it. Yeah. Thank you. Well, here it is. This is just an idea of how color is being used, yep. unfinished, but nevertheless, we did go quite a bit, I think, in that time span. And I hope letter, that you. Letter, and we'll put it on our website. Oh, Lovely. And if you want to write to me, I just write down my email very quickly to those that didn't grab it. I'll give it to you very fast. It's watercolors, W-A-T-E-R-C-O-L-O-U-R-S, the Canadian way, at rogers.com, okay? In Canada, watercolors is spelled, colors is spelled O-U-R-S. It's just the way it is. It's stupid, but that's nevertheless. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, buddy. And thank you. A great honor. And I'm very pleased. And I do hope I get to meet you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thanks, everyone. Nice job. Okay, Angie, uh, are you there? Yes, I am.